Mizmor le David Adonai roi lo echsar Pino te she yarbitzeni Al mei menuchot Al mei menuchot Yena aleni Nafshi yeshovev yeshovev Yancheni v'magle tzedek Yancheni v'magle tzedek L'man shemo Gam ki eilech Begeitz al mavet Lo ira ra ki ata imadi Shivtecha umishantecha Heima yena hamuni Taruch lefanai, lefanai Shulchan neged zorerai Dishanta vashemen roshi Kosi revaya Said, Ir de Funi, Koyeme Haya, Koyeme Haya, Vishabti, Bevet Adonai, Leorechiami. Adonai roi lo echsar Adonai roi lo echsar Please join me in reading the English to the 23rd Psalm. It's on the second page of your pamphlet. We we'll read together in English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I continue by reciting the words of Psalm 15 in Hebrew and English. Mizmorga David, Adonai, mi agor ba'olecha, mi ishkon bechar kodshecha, holech tamim ufu al tzedek, v'dover emet bilvavo, lo bagal al lashano, lo asa l'avei racha, v'chepa lo nasa al keravo, nivzeh ve'enav nimas, v'et yireh Adonai yechabed, nishba l'haba v'lo yamir, Kaspo donatan beneshech, veshochad anaki lo lakach, ose ele lo yimot leolam. A psalm of David, do we deserve to enter God's sanctuary? Can we merit a place in the presence of God? Live with integrity. Do what is right. Speak the truth without deceit. 
Have no slander upon your tongue. Do no evil to others. Do not mistreat your neighbor. Spurn a contemptible person, but honor those who revere Adonai. Never retract a promise once made, though it may bring you harm. Lend no money at unfair rates. Accept no bribe against the innocent. Make these deeds your own. Then shall you stand firm forever. Amen. As Rabbi Friedman just read the words of Psalm 15, which speaks about a person of integrity. We remember Yadel Sclair for so many positive qualities. She was truly a wonderful woman, full of integrity. And as that psalm ends, that we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, so too we believe that about Yadel. Her soul will dwell forever with God, and her legacy lasts in all of us who knew her, the door of a door from generation to generation. I also just want to appreciate everyone being here today to honor Yadel's memory, and a special appreciation to Rabbi Stephen Lowenstein from Am Shalom for also being here with the family. In Psalm 103, it states, Kirachem av al-banim, Richam Adonai al yireav As a father has compassion for his children, God has compassion. God knows how we are fashioned. God remembers that we're but dust. The days of mortals are like grass. We flourish as the flowers of the fields. A wind passes over them, and they are no more, and no one can recognize where they grew. But God's compassion is everlasting. God's kindness to children's children, to all the reverent ones, endures age after age, unchanging. There is a, a writings from an ancient scholar named Ben Sira, who said the following. Let us now praise distinguished leaders, those who came before us. They are great glory to God who created them. Their lives proclaim God's majesty. They were honored in their generation and were a source of pride in their times. Some of them have left a name so that all declare their praise. Their good fortune is transmitted to their descendants, their heritage to future generations. Their posterity shall endure forever, and their glory will not be blotted out. Their bodies will lie buried in peace, and their names will live forever. People will recall and recount their wisdom, and the congregation will sing their praise. I think that's a perfect description of how we feel about Yadel Sclair. And Ben Sira also said, and this is directed specifically to the family, when parents who have taught their children pass on, that passing is not true death. As long as the children live, and even the more so when there are grandchildren and great-grandchildren, there's a part of that person that can never die. When alive, a parent rejoices with children, and in death that parent will not grieve, for she knows that her legacy will be handed down Lador by door from one generation to the next. Amen. In memory of uh, his mother, I'm now going to ask Ron to say a few words. Good morning and welcome everyone. Today we honor my mother on behalf of my family. I want to sincerely thank all of you for attending. Since my wife delivered the very sad news of my mother's sudden passing, I've received so many incredibly kind words of love and support from so many people. One sincere Condolence call, text, and email after the other. I've heard from family, friends, and associates from across the United States, Canada, and Israel. From the moment Leah said to me that her heart was broken, I have received the most thoughtful and wonderful messages from Israeli David Sclair, our first cousin and Dell's nephew. Yadel's great love of family, her humility and concern for others, and her lively intelligence made her very special. From our friend Rabbi David Began of L'Chaim Center, Yadel was so generous to the Jewish community and so loyal to Israel. 
Her passing is a sad day for the Jewish people. As I look back and go through my own vivid memories of my mother, I'm reminded of Maya Angelou's quote. I have learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I wanted to share a few memories from my youth that exemplify some of my mother's values and how she made me feel. 1979, I had a series of unrelated health issues that prompted a trip to the Mayo Clinic with my mom. I remember taking the longest blood test of my life and looking at my mother. She was steady, supportive, loving. She put me at ease. At that age, I learned not to jump to conclusions, to trust doctors. Mom made me feel safe. In the early 1980s, my parents would drive their Bluebird RV up to Parents Weekend at Camp Horseshoe in Minong, Wisconsin. Besides envisioning the RV on the athletic field, I have an enduring, mess, uh, enduring image of my mom welcoming me and my cabin mates and friends into the Bluebird. She was always friendly, always outgoing. She was the loving host. I'll never forget her wave from afar. reminding me that she loved me. A few years later, in 1986, we ventured together to New Orleans to send me off to college. I remember being scared, intimidated, unsure of my surroundings. She kept me grounded. She helped me organize and stay focused on my new academic life. And again, she was supportive and made me feel at ease. Since my father's passing in 2008, we've tried our best to involve Grandma Dell in as many family plans as possible. We cherished her snowbird schedule that brought her to Chicago from May through October. Sunday night dinners were a regular summertime event for us that we cherished very much. We try to maximize as many winter and spring breaks as possible, and I know that Brett, Carson, Logan, and Sophia all have great memories of Florida and, under, and other wonderful trips with their beloved Grandma Dell. My mother did not return to Chicago in the spring of 2015 as she was being treated for cancer. I visited her Mother's Day week in 2015 and it was the first time she cried when I arrived and again when I departed a few days later. She'd lost most of her hair, she was sick, she missed her partner. I tried my best to make her feel loved. During the pandemic, we tried a combination of phone calls and FaceTime calls to stay connected to her. I tried to always call her on Fridays to wish her a good Shabbos. I knew over the decades, she received calls from rabbis and community leaders regularly wishing her a Shabbat Shalom. And I tried my best to continue that tradition with her. Finally, in April of this year, when Leah and I were each fully vaccinated, we visited my mom in Florida to spend a few days with her, just four months ago. It was our last time seeing her. On our final evening of that trip, we had what I called the talk. I was honest with her that there were some very private things I wanted to say to her while she was able to talk and listen. We had a wonderful conversation, a truly authentic and heartfelt conversation, one for the ages. I'm truly grateful that we had this time. One of the items I shared with her that night was that her lifelong commitment to philanthropy, to making the world a better place, to caring for family, caring for Jews, and making Israel a safer, more secure, and more prosperous nation, that total, Commitment to philanthropy has made me incredibly proud to be her son. From tradition in the kitchen, to Bethel's sisterhood, to the Weizmann Institute of Science, Friends of the, FD, I, Friends of the IDF, L'Chaim, Meshi, Chicago Federation, the Rashi Foundation, to the Canaret College Library, to the Israel Project, and on and on and on. And 
That same spring, prior to going on a Weitzman trip to Israel, she asked me to visit Hadassah Hospital and see the Chagall windows. At first I hesitated, Mom, I'm on a Weitzman trip. And then she insisted, Ronald, please go. I love them. I said to her, okay, no problem. You had me at the second Ronald. <laughs> I had a wonderful visit that day at Hadassah. Weitzman's Lee Brown wrote me yesterday and said, a pillar of the Weitzman Institute, Yadell and family have made incalculable contributions to the growth and development of the Weitzman Institute and the State of Israel. Her legacy will live on through Professor Avigdor Schertz, who holds the Yadell and Robert N. Sclair Professorial Chair in Biochemistry. Professor Schertz has won many prestigious awards and his new cancer treatment hopes gives the hope to many patients fighting prostate, lung, and esophageal cancer. Her generosity, support, and dedication has advanced science for the benefit of humanity. Quite a legacy, Mom. Your and Dad's philanthropic contributions to scientific research will literally save lives for decades to come. We love you. And we will miss you very much. Your memory will forever be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask Tammy and Jack also to come up to say a few words about their mother. <laughs> My mother was a unique woman. To begin with, she was the only Yadel that I think any of us ever knew. I never knew of another Yadel, but ironically, I have good friends whose mother's names were Adele, and frequently people would call my mother Adele, but mostly she was just Del. My mother was the matriarch of a large family. Her mother was one of seven children, so there were many cousins that played an important role as she was growing up. Ron commented the other night that she was the Facebook of her generation, the center hub of a communication network that included every member of immediate and extended family and friends. Today, I am aware of the enormous responsibility and dedication she had to accommodate everyone in that sphere, which she did with grace, respect, loyalty, and love. It is not an easy task. I realize that I was often guilty of not appreciating the patience and calm required of this. A favorite saying of hers was, honesty is the best policy. Sometimes being brutally honest and occasionally remarking that she had noticed you had gained weight. Her frugality was legendary in particular, on the occasion of purchasing their first boat, a modest 110-foot yacht, my mother outfitted night crossing with linens and sundry items purchased at the flea market. She loved a bargain. My parents were remarkable role models for a happy marriage, truly a perfect balance of adventure and practicality. They loved sharing their lives together with family and friends. After my father passed, my mother, who was always an independent woman, lost some of the vitality she had shared with my dad for adventure and spent her remaining years focusing on keeping up to date with the activities of her nine grandchildren and her three great-grandchildren. 
she shared her positive attitude and continued to offer advice and loving support. As a woman from a modest upbringing, she excelled in many meaningful relationships in many areas. She had a great love for helping others, was kind, supportive, generous, and loyal to her many lifelong friends and their children. My mother reached out to all of her nieces, nephews, great nieces, and nephews, and created a legacy that will be a challenge to uphold. I hope to have the talent to follow in your footsteps, Mom. And I take great comfort in knowing that you are reunited with Dad, the love of your life. I will miss you and your unconditional love. Rabbi Schwab, family, friends, Yadel touched the heart and lives of many people all around the world. In these challenged times, I'm happy that we are all able to be here, either in person or by Zoom. And to all of you, thank you for participating and honoring Yadel. Kind, caring, thoughtful, pragmatic, task-oriented, content, non-challenging, giving, respectful, frugal, family-oriented, philanthropic, community-oriented, totally unassuming, giving, Competitive, especially at Scrabble. Honest, companion, world traveler, journaler. To each of us, we saw different attributes of Yadel, and they're very personal, and we sort of have gotten used to one or many more of those attributes. Over the past 48 hours, I've received innumerable texts and emails and um, for, I was moved by at least a couple of those from caregivers that she has had over the years. One who respected her religious and spiritual values as she came to services on a regular basis here in the sanctuary and the caregiver had commented on what impact that Yadel had on her religious and spiritual life. Another aspect that I never really knew about was that one of her, another one of her caregivers had told me that Yadel carried a letter that she was very proud about in her wallet that my daughter Alana had written her thanking her for making her a better person and exposing her to philanthropy and life in general. Yadel had a long and eventful life and was very lucky to travel most of it with her true love, her husband, Robert. I was very fortunate to have been part of that journey. I met Yadel 38 years ago, and my relationship evolved over the years. When I first met her, I was the Jewish doctor then the boyfriend of Tammy, eventually the son-in-law, and father of four of her grandchildren. Over the years, I served as her medical consultant when she was healthy and didn't really need me, and when she became very ill. After Bob died, I became her confidant, 
her counselor, and over time evolved to be a real friend. We spent thousands of hours together discussing every topic in the world, the kids, the grandchildren, philanthropy, philosophy, life, dreams. How she wanted to spend the rest of her life, where she wanted to be, what she wanted to do, and how she wanted to die. Deep, meaningful talks evolved eventually to be updates and reality orientations. I had the opportunity to really get to know her. And I hope I fulfilled my duties and responsibilities to her. Thirteen years ago, Yadel and Robert's journey was interrupted, and their paths became divergent. But now they can be together again, at each other's side for eternity. Yadel, rest assured, we will miss you and love you, and we'll think of you all the time. We're now going to ask uh, Cousin Bruce Clare to say some words. My name is Bruce Clare. And I'm going to apologize that some of my comments are going to be repetitive from what, what people have already said, but I think uh, they deserve to be said. Uh, my wife, Marsha, and I live in Indianapolis, and I am Dell's nephew. My father, Alan, was Uncle Rob's brother, but perhaps more important, my mother, Mitzi, and Aunt Dell were very close and congenial friends. When driving into the town of Highland Park on Central Avenue, I noticed that there are several street signs which state that a person's true character is revealed by what they do when they think no one is watching. In other words, how does a person act when they think no one is there to judge their decisions and actions? Are they only for themselves? I know definitely that for Marcia and myself, and for our three children and seven grandchildren, Aunt Dell demonstrated over many decades the behavior and character which serves as an exemplary model to emulate. She cared about us, she made us feel good, and she sincerely showed an interest in what we did. To go one step further, we all know, as it's been said, that no one lives forever. But a few remarkable people live on for many years and generations after they pass. And Aunt Dell will certainly be one of those people. Her genuine love and interest in being connected with family and friends, her gracious and almost overwhelming hospitality, and her numerous philanthropic accomplishments, all supported and enhanced by her many positive character traits combined to create an unusually positive legacy which will continue to be known for many generations beyond today. The bottom line, most if not all people here today 
would agree that Aunt Dell's actions and efforts helped make the world a better place. Aunt Dell's life truly demonstrates, demonstrated how to pursue tikkun olam to mend the world. I think we can all agree our world today needs more Aunt Dells. Thank you. In the Talmud, it states, she who has compassion on others and lifts up their hearts is a true descendant of Abraham and one who deserves honor in heaven. Today, we sadly say farewell to Yadel Skler, Yael Batamchen Velvel, who is truly a compassionate soul filled with optimism, warmth, and caring, and who had a special talent for lifting people up when they were down and caring for those who are in need in the world. The world is surely bereft of one of its brightest lights with her passing, and all who knew her will miss her greatly. Thus, it is my very sad honor to extend the condolences of this congregation, North Suburban Synagogue Bethel, which meant so much to Yadel, to the entire family, to her beloved children, to Tammy and Jack, to Janice and Arnie, as well as to Ron and Leah and to her cherished grandchildren, Laura, Alana, and Adiel, Zachary and Alyssa, Jordan, Molly, Brett, Carson, Logan, and Sophia, and to her very adored great-grandchildren, Roman, Serena, and Jasper. My hope is that the prayers we share today, the traditions we observe, and the words we speak bring you some measure of comfort at a difficult time in your life. As you all know, Yadel grew up in Chicago, she was always an incredibly bright woman, and I was told she was an excellent student, earning straight A's through her entire academic career, which culminated in a degree from the University of Illinois. And it was there also that she met the love of her life, Robert. As the story goes, they were set up on a date by a mutual friend, whom Robert knew from childhood, and who then also became friends with Yadel. The family said it was during this date that Robert discovered how special Yadel was for he intended to buy her a Coke, which everyone was drinking at the time. And he found that she didn't like Coke, which he thought was very unique. And then he found out that she was left-handed, just like him, another special trait. And of course, he was charmed by her intelligence, her kindness, and her beauty. I think if I got it right, it became known jokingly in the family as the Coke date. And from that day forth, they were on a straight path to marriage, and an incredible relationship that lasted until Robert died almost 13 years ago. The family described the two of them as lovebirds. Throughout their lives together, they were affectionate, complimentary to one another, and true partners. They loved to travel together and were each other's very best friends. Each of the children shared that Yadel was an incredible wife and totally devoted to Robert as he was to her. Perhaps, as the family has already mentioned, there is indeed some comfort in knowing that they are now reunited and are once again together. The family also shared that Yadel was a wonderful daughter and daughter-in-law. She was always attentive, loving, and dedicated to both her parents and her husband's parents, and I think no one's surprised to hear that. In fact, that's how she was with all of her relatives and everyone she loved. As time went on, it became clear that Yadel was the central cog in her very large family. As you already heard, she was talking to her many relatives all the time and updating each one about the other and what they were doing. It was often through her that many members of the family stayed connected to one another and knew what everyone else in the family was up to. The family jokes, as you already heard, that she was the human Facebook before there was ever a website. You heard already from two of her children, so I'm just gonna say it is no surprise that she was a dedicated mother as well who loved and supported her children in every way she knew how. I know that you will each miss her very, very much. And please know from my perspective, because she did talk about you, that she was very proud of each and every one of you and loved you very dearly. It almost goes without saying, but of course I'm gonna say it, how much she loved her grandchildren. 
As they shared with me, she was incredibly interested in the lives of each and every one of you as individuals. She constantly wanted to know what was going on and how you were doing, how you were really doing. As Jordan shared, she had this unique ability to say just the right thing to make you feel better when you were down. And being in her presence was always comforting and somehow always felt right. Everyone liked to be with her. I specifically remember how excited she was when Sophia was born because she called me shortly after and proceeded to make sure I was available to do her naming, which appropriately we did at her home. That excitement was contagious. She was just so happy. I wasn't necessarily the rabbi at Bethel when many of the other grandchildren were born, but that one I remember specifically. And then when great-grandchildren came into the picture, all the more delight. In these last few years, her ability to see and play with them always made her incredibly happy. Bottom line, she was absolutely loved her family, and she showed it all the time and in every way she could. She was always wanted to be near them. She wanted to take them on trips and vacations, host holidays and meals, and when in person wasn't possible, she was constantly on the phone with everyone. The family has truly lost their matriarch, but she will still be with you always through incredible cherished memories and through the amazing legacy she has left behind. You each gave her so much nachat, or in Yiddish nachas, the Hebrew and Yiddish word for fulfillment and pride. Personally, I just want to share that from my point of view as a rabbi, Yidel was also a tremendous leader. Along with her husband, they of course led in the world of philanthropy and giving. My list is not even as complete as Ron's was, but the Weizmann Institute, Kinneret College, JUF, Hadassah, Jewish Women's Charities, and of course our synagogue here at Bethel, just to name the causes that I personally knew about. Yet even beyond the world of being a leader in Sedaka, here at Bethel, she was incredibly involved in our synagogue leadership. Bethel was a very, very important place to her throughout her life. There was a period of time when she barely missed a function or event. She made many of her closest friends inside these very walls and rooms, and it is right here often in the Field Family Sanctuary where she experienced some of the happiest and saddest moments of her life. She was absolutely devoted to our sisterhood, helping to run our once famous art fair, and also helping to produce and create the Tradition in the Kitchen cookbook that Ron mentioned that so many of us on the North Shore and beyond own and use. And among many other positions, she took the ultimate position of responsibility in our sisterhood by serving as our sisterhood president. Yadel led warmly but firmly with both wisdom and skill. She was incredibly articulate and effective speaker, and she knew how to motivate and manage people. I admired her, and the synagogue owes her a great debt of gratitude for her wonderful service to our community. On another personal, personal note, I just want to share that, as she did with so many others that she cared for, she was always warm, friendly, and kind to me. She always asked about me and my wife by name, as well as our children. And just like you, I felt when she was asking, she truly wanted to know how I really was. I will absolutely miss having her here at Bethel. So whether you miss Yadel for the little things, her fun outfits, her frozen cookies, her travel journals, her strange fear of birds, her love of flowers and of art, her competitive card and scrabble play, her what I understand in the family is her famous rice casserole, I didn't eat that, um, or her love of talking on the phone, or whether you remember her for the big things, her compassion, the way she always took care of those in need, her true love of Judaism and Israel, or her deep love of her precious family. Let's always remember her with great fondness and with tremendous respect and lots and lots of love. May her memory always be for a blessing and let everyone here say, Amen. I'm now going to ask those who are able to please stand as the Chazan will now recite the memorial prayer in her memory. El male rachamim shoch 
חן במרומים. אמצי מנוחה נכונה תחת כנפי השכינה. במעלות קדושים, קדושים וטהורים, כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים את נשמת יעל בת עמכן ועבור שהלכה לעולמה בגן עדן תה מנוחתה. אנא, אנא בעל הרחמים, הסתיריה בסתר כנפיך לעולמים. וצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתה. אדוני הוא נחלתה, ותנוח בשלום על משכבה, ונאמר אמן. Exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering place among the holy and the pure. To the soul of Yadel Skler, Yael Batamchen Vivelvel, who has gone to her eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. May she always, always rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. You may be seated. Friends, this concludes the services here at the synagogue. The interment and burial services will continue at Memorial Park Cemetery in Skokie. For those of you traveling with us to the cemetery and the funeral procession, please do keep the following safety precautions in mind. Please make sure that your bright headlights and your four-way hazard flashers are on. Please be sure to obtain an orange funeral safety sticker for your windshield, and we will be providing several of the cars throughout the procession with a magnetic orange flag to be placed on top of your car. Please travel as close as safety permits to the car in front of you to avoid any gaps in our procession. For your own safety and security, I would suggest not speaking or texting while driving to the cemetery. And as we make our way through the various intersections, if the light changes color and the car in front of you goes through, please proceed with caution. Feel free to use your horn liberally as you go through the intersection, but please make every attempt and effort to keep our procession together. The family has requested that any memorial contributions as we've heard, um, to Hadassah or to the Weizmann Institute. And the family will be together at the Sclair residence at 501 Sheridan Road in Kenilworth uh, following the interment uh, with a minion at 7.30 this evening and resuming Shiva tomorrow, Friday, from 1 until 4 p.m. That information is on the service folder that you should have received when you came into the sanctuary today. If you did not receive one, we do have those for you as you leave. And the information is also available on our website. The following individuals have been asked to serve as pallbearers, Logan Sclair, Brett Sclair, Carson Sclair, Zachary Faintuck, Jordan Faintuck, and Adiel Hawk. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and stand in place as we escort the casket, the pallbearers, the family, and the clergy from the sanctuary. <laughs> 